So we've got a, 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 a really, really challenging case today. And um, I think it's really, really important to uh, sort of point out is that um, I suppose I uh, post lots and lots of challenging cases every week. So, you know, last week it was a perforation case. Um, again, this week is uh, a near perforation case. And what I want to be clear about is that um, I choose the cases based on their educational value. So what I, what I wouldn't say is these types of um, difficulties happen all the time in my daily practice. So um, obviously I get uh, the cases that are nice and easy and I do lots of single rooted uh, teeth or really nice upper molars. And I don't usually post those because um, they don't really have a lot of um, learning value with them. So I just wanted to be clear about that. I thought I've been um, putting up all these sort of uh, these videos recently and there's been lots and lots of difficulties. And I think in the main, my practice is pretty straightforward. But, um, but I, like I say, this is another really, really interesting case. This is a case of an upper four. And if we look at the x-ray here, it's really not in the best of shape. So um, this uh, tooth was referred to me by another practitioner. Um, this was the, uh, the, the, the pre-op x-ray that the practitioner had taken before they had checked for restorability. So the previous practitioner had um, removed all the decay, found out there's quite a large fracture in the sort of buccal or palatal aspect. And, um, and and removed all the decay, and obviously found that the uh, that the pulp chamber was exposed, and the tooth needed the root canal. And when we when we look at this tooth, we we know that the restorability has got a huge question mark over it. So that's the first thing I am concerned about with this tooth. But um, my second concern really is about when we look at this sort of the apical end of this tooth, because it's difficult really to work out if um, these are two roots or this is just a one-rooted tooth and the sort of uh, the apical end has suffered uh, some sort of uh, inflammatory resorption. Um, it, it transpires that there are actually two roots and um, the sort of line in the middle isn't like a kind of an open apex, which is, um, makes things a lot more or a lot less complicated. So if we get on with the case here, we can see that is actually the, the buccal aspect of this tooth, which been, um, which is sort of fractured away and decayed. And I'm just ever so slightly accessing the tooth now, just with a fast hand piece. And I've just felt that kind of drop into the um, into this access cavity here. And luckily, the um, the, the referring dentist. He, uh, that, that person um, is very competent and has placed a, a PTFE dressing in there. Remember, we use the PTFE rather than cotton wool because um, PTFE doesn't get stuck to your uh, restoration materials. And when we look inside the access cavity, we can see that there is um, a, a canal. And in this case, it, it was the palatal. Um, and what I'm doing now is just having a bit of an investigation with the size 10 gear file to see if there's like a sort of a, 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 a buckle sort of canal there. We can't obviously see one. So what I do like to do is I like to use a, a strong um, or a high energy ultrasonic just to see if I can feel around for this buckle canal. And, and I'm using um, my ultrasonic activator here rather than my endodontic ultrasonic uh, instruments to see if I can have a little look around for um, the, uh, the, the 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 buccal canal, and <clears throat> I get like a weird, bit of a weird feeling in my in my belly here, and I think to myself, um, I'm not entirely sure that uh, that this um, this 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 is actually the, the 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 buccal canal. It just feels like it's a little bit centered down. Uh, the middle of the tooth, uh, you know, I can see that where the, uh, where, the, where, the, where the composite filling is ending, it's not as if the, the, the tooth is sort of pinching inwards. When we, um, when we look at the composite filling, it, it matches onto the tooth. So there's, there's, there's a kind of a suggestion that maybe I need to move a little bit more 
uh, buckley in this case you know i could um stop and and go for a cbct but um you know in this case i didn't i think extending the prep is much easier so if i use a fast hand piece here just to extend this uh prep out and we can see um that uh, there's another dressing there so it's really, really important not to go to gung ho when you're accessing teeth. You know that was um, a, a, there's a, a really strong um, possibility that I, I perforated that tooth. So it's always about thinking about where you are and just stopping and relaxing. Never rush. If you rush, you always muck things up. So again, we just open up the access using a bit of size 10k for a little bit of fast hand piece. And um, <clears throat> we can see here that the the, the buccal canal is 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 pretty obvious, and um, and we're all ready to go. And you can see where I've just removed a little bit more of that dentine that I'd like to in the middle. Um, I think in a way the reason why that had occurred is because I'd used my high energy ultrasonic, and I think these high energy ultrasonics are really really good for finding canals. So they're really really good for dropping into canals. But they're also really, really good at removing dentin, you know. And so you've got to be really careful you don't unnecessarily remove dentin that does need to be removed. And then it's just my normal uh, protocol. So I'm just going to use the, um, a size 10K file just to look for the working length. And that was found pretty easy. And um, we're just going to shape uh, the, the canal again with my usual protocol. We're going to use a a size 15 high flex glide path that goes to length quite easily so um i use my uh, 25 high flex just to finally shape and then again it's the same with the with with the palatal canal and once the canals are shaped we're going to go for a comfort radiograph okay so um what i'm going to do here is i know the working lengths are a certain length we're going to fit the cones um, to that working length I'm going to just feel for a bit of tug back so we know that the end of the GP cone fits snugly with uh, with the shaped apical end and when we look at the comfort radiograph here we can see that the GP points are within the radiographic apex and what I mean by this is the GP points aren't actually all the way to the end but if you uh, have a look at a lot of my videos we know that the radiographic apex and the actual anatomical apex difference so the comfort radiograph does show that they're slightly short of the radiographic apex but i am personally happy that this is at the right working length so once we know the comfort radiograph looks great and the gp points are to length i'm now just going to assess this kind of um, cavity that's being uh, being caused here this excess dentin removal and remember this isn't a perforation i've stopped myself before the perforation has occurred and i'm just using a paper point just to sort of wick out any of the moisture that's sort of collecting down there and i'm actually going to fill this with a bias ceramic so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just check the size of the plug of fits into um the uh the, into the hole and then i'm going to use well root putty so this is a, a bias ceramic which has got like a sort of putty consistency rather than using um uh, bidentine which can be can be quite technique sensitive to use and i suppose in a way you would ask yourself why would i use a bias ceramic to fill this uh, excess dentin removal well i could use um, a gi or a composite but i think on balance you know using a gi well that can be quite difficult to place although it does bond to the tooth surface itself using a composite it's going to be really really difficult down there it's going to be difficult to etch and bond and and get a composite down there um i think uh, the the bioceramic is probably our best bet in this situation don't forget there are hundreds of thousands of um dentine tubules which are in the sort of coronal aspect of the tooth here so um you know when we're using the bioceramic it's got the it's 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 gonna it's gonna directly bond to the dentin and it's gonna get into all the nooks and crannies and also the sort of pre-operative steps to fit the bioceramic in that cavity are much less than say like a normal restorative material so what I'm not saying is you, you you could use whatever restorative material you liked, but in this case, I feel like a bias ceramic was the most appropriate um, material to use just in this case. So once we've set the uh, the bias ceramic and we've sort of filled that sort of cavity, we're going to dry the canals uh, with paper points. Make sure the uh, the, the canals are uh, perfectly nice and dry, 
and then we are going to operate with uh, with with one fill. So one fill is like a, a liquid bioceramic um, uh, endodontic sealer. Again, we can use these visco tips um, with this kind of sleeve on, and I'm very 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 gently pushing the GP cones to length. Again, if you're a regular reviewer of my uh, video you know I like to use bioceramic sealer I like to fit the sealer directly into the canal it's really really important that you don't do that without uh, an operating microscope because you can have uh, you know you can really push a hell of a lot of this sealer out at the end of the tooth if you don't have a visual um, confirmation of where that seal is going by directly injecting it into the um, into the canal. If you don't have an operating microscope, then you can just use your loops. But what I'll probably um, do in that case is uh, get a little bit of bioceramic on the back of your hand on a glove or you know on a pad, and then just pick up the bioceramic onto the GP, you, like like you would do traditionally. And then we're going to use the heater plugger here just to remove. Uh, the excess GP and then some Mach 2 pluggers just to you know really severely condense down the GP points making sure that the GP is condensed into the tooth and the seal is getting into all the little nooks and crannies and um, you know if we look at the post-op radiograph here it looks not bad you know I think I am a clinician hit on here um, who likes to show his all his warts and all um, uh, uh, treatments okay you know like I mentioned at the start you know I could just put endless easy molar um, uh, root canal treatments up onto this channel and but I, but I just wonder wh where, where the actual educational benefit would come from in this case um, and this tooth is in, in, is in a real, real state, okay? And you might get like an oral surgeon or an implant dentist who would think, well, that tooth's had it, it needs to come out. Um, I think a consent goes into a lot of these things. And I suppose, you know, an, an implant dentist or oral surgeon might say, have that out. But I um, essentially gave the patient the option, you know, um, that there's, there's always a consenting process that occurs. I don't do any root canals without a half an hour consultation. And in the consultation, the vast majority of that is talking and explaining and telling to the patient, you know, obviously I'm gonna talk about the obvious risks associated with root canal, but I also tailor make the consent process specific to this tooth. So my obvious concerns with this tooth were its restorability because it was quite badly broken down, but also I was concerned about um, the root end on this tooth. So um, overall, the tooth in the mouth looks fantastic and the patient um, knows that the tooth is in a poor prognosis. He unfortunately um, resisted the crown for now. He's going to just wait three months um, for things just to heal up before he crowns it. Um, again, it's 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 kind of really, really tough um, decision to make, isn't it? You know, we get some dentists who like to crown straight away. We get some dentists who like to wait three months. I personally um, don't have um, a strong opinion on it. I think it's done on a case-by-case -case basis. So depending... You know, if the tooth's in a really, really poor state, I wouldn't tend to crown straight away. If we know that the root canal's um, done to a nice high standard and the, and the tooth's got a pretty good prognosis, then I would tend to crown straight away. Um, I think there, there was a bit of a way up here and I was very, very 50-50 on this tooth. Do we crown it straight away or do we or do we wait a little bit? Um, I think the, the, the prognosis of this root canal is less than usual so i suppose i can see the patient's point of view of not going for a crown but i think the restorability of this tooth the prominence is quite far in the mouth at the front um the the fact that it's so badly broken down i think on on balance a crown probably would have been better but i'm happy i'm happy that the patient's made an informed decision and you know if we look at the root canal itself we've got a little bit of a sealer puff you know, uh, at the moment, I am working on a sealer puff video because it's probably the number one thing that I'm asked um, by most of the dentists on here. Um, but to cut a very, very long story short, I'm using a bioceramic. So if I push a little bit of the sealer out, it's usually not the end of the world. And usually the sealer is resolved, but sometimes the sealer stays. 
I've been told, but I don't have any evidence, that when you push by ceramic out the end of the tooth, it's associated with healing, but I don't know about the, um, the evidence around that. I think on balance, I don't want to seal a puff, but if it happens, it's not the end of the world. And also, you know, we finished the root canal, I show the patient at the end, and we explain everything, and he was very, very happy, and I'm very, very happy. So that's it. And again, another video, I'd like to thank everyone for your support. If you like the channel, the most important thing for you to do is subscribe and like. If you have any questions about today's um, treatment, if you have any criticisms, if you feel like I've done the wrong thing or you would have done something different, put it in the comment section below and let's have a debate. And I will see you next week. Bye-bye.